we finally had some rains and it's starting to cool off a bit and so now the wine cap mushroom Strafaria rugosa annulata is making its fall appearance as it reliably does each year. I'm going to share some notes about these wonderful mushrooms that are really great for the garden and some ideas around propagation and timing and identification. I definitely want to be really clear uh, at the outset here this is not going to be a definitive you know positive ID style thing watch this look at some mushrooms in your garden and you can eat them so please do your due diligence if you're trying to key out wine cap or Strafaria rugosa annulata mushrooms in your garden but once you've inoculated them and we'll talk in a moment about some sources for great spawn it's nice to know what you should be looking for and the timing on these wonderful little creatures our initial inoculation uh, material came from Field and Forest. It's fieldforest.net, and I'll link that in the description. Our wonderful friends, uh, Aaron and Pete, up in Auburn, New York, are also inoculating and selling wine cap spawn, as well as my lovely friend Eric down in the Hudson Valley. I'm gonna link to those spots as well. They're small startup nurseries uh, that have wonderful spawn and probably can answer some questions for you. In a cool, moist climate, wine cap mushrooms are incredibly easy to grow. Our zone 5B, central New York, is definitely hardy. I've heard of folks up in Vermont and Colder growing them with no problem. So they're a hardy, robust, perennial mushroom. And once you've established them in the landscape, they tend to persist and actually spread. Here are some that are at various stages. Now you're gonna see lots of slug damage because this is slug season two. They correspond with one another. But this is a beautiful specimen ready for eating. We would cut it right at the base. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, using these stem butts. These are very, very easy to propagate. Once you have spawn and you start seeing them flush in your landscape, you can expand them very, very easily just by taking these very active bases that have roots, quote unquote, which is the mycelial network, and putting that in new sawdust, new wood chips, new leaf litter. You can also see that where this mushroom fruited from down below, Pretty much every time you're going to see its mycelial network, its root system, and it has a very distinct sweet smell, very ropey, almost pure white mycelial mat that's here. And more or less anywhere you put this in contact with new, novel, moist carbon material that is also in contact with soil or compost, ideally, they should be able to take and continue to run rampant. Now again, I'm not a mushroom ID person, but you can see here's the ring, the veil that was growing around that's ripped off, and the dark spores in between the light-colored gills in there. And we know we inoculated this with wine cap mushroom a ways back. Uh, we'll simply wipe some of the wood chips and leaf and sawdust off the top. We don't wash them, just wipe them off with a moist towel, and they should be good to cook. But again, from whence it came, from down in this leaf duff. Now these fruited from the edge of a pathway where we had lots of leaf litter, been throwing prunings all season from the alder above. And that is some really nice material. Seems crazy to offer this idea, but basically when you see wine cap fruiting and you grab the mycelial mat that's from below and you smell it, it's very, very sweet. It's very rich. It, it smells like the most delicious forest soil after a good rain in the spring, but they generally show up in the fall and that's a great time to identify these mycelial mats and expand them if you want to. Mm. So just as an example, from this little patch, we've got, this isn't a huge flush by any stretch, but it's also been a very powerfully dry summer, very stressful for mushrooms. And so it's just wonderful. We got an inch of rain, and that's all it took to wake them back up. We might get another few more flushes as it rains some more and gets cool. Uh, you can see the sawdust where the mycelial mat is running. Below is the soil. And that sort of combo is wonderful for transplanting. So we'll take this and move it to a new spot. Now just keep in mind the process of inoculating wine cap in new year areas is very technical and very challenging. It took us years of training to get there, but we'll get you started on the path. Basically, you move material aside. You see soil down below. Put the stuff, put the stuff on top. Now, are we gonna make a tag and formally map this out and make an update on our master plan? Nope, but we'll try to remember to keep an eye out for mushrooms there. 
And knowing that that is a margin, it's basically a walkway that gets lots of leaf litter and debris. We'll often rake our apple leaves over these sorts of areas to mulch the plants that are in here. It's a nice context for the wine cap. It's also an area where our greenhouse, when our very professionally installed gutter does not fully catch every last drop, the overflow is going through all of this nutrient and bed. It's a nice context for those mushrooms to thrive. Now I greedily grabbed a big wad of mycelial mat in here. Very important that you do the respectful thing to your mushroom, your mother plant, your mother colony. And that is, well, there's another one we can eat some of and propagate the rest. And I can see a little cap in here. Uh, the important thing to do is to say thank you. You can say it if you want to out loud. Although mushrooms listen to the language of thank you being simply piles of loose carbony debris on top that they can occupy and move into and be protected from direct sun and drying forces. That's the kind of thank you they want. Here's something that's valuable to keep an eye out for. As you find prime and nearly prime caps in your garden in the fall, you're also going to find this inevitably. This is a wine cap that is on its, well, this is definitely pretty far on the other side. If we were hard up, we would certainly cook this, but it's fully open. It's lost a lot of the color on top, tons of slug damage. It's pretty far along, but this is also wonderful propagation material. So I would pick this knowing that the mycelial mat underneath is strong, doing its thing. Again, the brief thank you, which we now know is leaves and debris. I may take this quote-unquote spent mushroom, spent as far as our direct needs, but as far as the mushroom world is concerned, it's pretty valuable. Here's a spot where I pruned a whole bunch of lemon balm and some European buckthorn and some old apples, threw them in a walkway. Go to bed, little mushroom, cap and all. Put that on top. I'll adjust it so the cap faces down, so all those spores couple hundred trillion propagules and such can drop right down into that moist leaf litter in a walkway. It'll get our foot traffic. It'll get more mulch later on. It'll get leaves. It'll get the debris from these gardens and it'll get going with more growth. Another really spent cap. You're still lovely. Let's move you over here. See what happens. Go to bed or wake up. Here's the cluster I started with. This one is, actually it looks like most of them want to come together. How's that for fancy? Oh my gosh. So we'll bring this in as is into the kitchen, cut it right at the soil line. These are all absolutely perfect for breakfast and cooking. And this bomber of a root system will go to somewhere new in the garden. And of course, we'll say thank you. I'll try to make a mental note, this clump of wonders right here. Maybe there's going to be some more from over here, but right across the pathway, again, occupying that edge, that boundary space. This cap, if we left it and it stayed cool and moist for a few days, this could become a, a huge, beautiful, singular cap. So we'll keep an eye on it and hope it doesn't become this, but we know what we can do with this if it does. Here's a nursery bed loaded to the gills with willow and elderberry cuttings. And a tiny teenser. Little wine cap friend. We'll give you another 24 hours, 48 hours. You'll be breakfast on Thursday. Um, butter's really the key for these mushrooms, is the thing, but. Could use some other kind of fat or wine. But a nice amount of butter is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to put them on like medium and let actually the mushrooms cook for a tiny bit before I add the garlic. And we'll, the garlic will end up being partially cooked and partially raw. I'm liking that more and more. Two heads of garlic for that amount of mushrooms. Garlic and mushrooms in equal weight. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I like it sometimes to be more uniformly chopped and, or sliced and sometimes to be all kinds of different pieces. So, well, that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna add some salt. This is salt that I've been liking making each summer, uh, just layering salt with some rose petals. Then it flavors the salt. It's, it's barely, noticeable and something like this but it's in the background and it's a good vibe i like adding some wine this is wine i made from a, a wine a friend had made a grape wine they had made that i cooked with some parsley and vinegar and honey and it's actually like an old medieval wine recipe for the heart that i just keep in the fridge and drink a little bit periodically but i also like using it for cooking i can share the recipe for it it's it's very straightforward and fun, um, but I'll just add a little of that. It's got like a sweet and very heavily parsley flavored way. I'm going to add the garlic now that it's juicy and the garlic can cook, not just on the flat pan with the little butter, but in the juices of the wine and the juices of the mushroom. But I think I'm... Well, uh, I'll just put it all in. I think I went a little overboard, but... <laughs> it's hard to know with garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let them get a little soft, and then I'll just put them in an omelet. We've got a little crust of sourdough left, so we're, I'll toast that up. Maybe sometime I'll make a video about making bread if anybody's interested. I've been doing it now for a bunch of years, the sourdough that method that I think a lot of people do called the tartine method works really well. Give the shells back to the chickens. My beloved omelet pan I got at Salvation Army and unless someone else sneaks and uses it or something it's perfectly seasoned and does a great job with omelets. Mm -hmm. I think I do need to re-season my pan. I might have cooked in it. Really? <laughs> <gasps> That stuff. Random herbs that were on the counter and pop peppers. Well, I need a receipt. <laughs> but you got the gist. <laughs>